Welcome to the MetPro Method Podcast. I am your host, Crystal O'Keefe. Today, I'm joined by MetPro coach, Kat Ramirez. And today we are discussing cold weather and how it can increase your appetite or at least feel that way. Kat, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me back again. I always love being here. And um, this is actually something that I was excited to talk about because I have had some experience with this. Um, both on the kind of like living somewhere cooler and darker side of things. And then also with um, cold weather sports. So this is a, an awesome topic to be covering. Well, I, I'm really glad that you have experience with this because I think my first question is like, does our appetite actually increase as it gets colder or does it just feel like it? Let's start there. <laughs> sure. Sure. So um, it could be uh one of two. So if you are somebody that is into cold weather sports, um, I used to do a lot of like ice camping and climbing. Um, and so you're in the cold weather, you're shivering, you know, temperatures are below freezing. Um, then yes, you are actually spending quite a bit more calories and you do need that extra food. Yes. A hundred percent. But for the most part, when things start to get darker, we don't have as many daylight hours. Um, it gets cooler. You know, we're in sweater weather and nice and cozy. We don't actually burn any more calories than normal. It's just, you just want to be cozy. You want to feel warm. Um, you know, you're maybe not doing as much as you would during the months where it's warmer outdoors, not moving around as much. And so, you know, maybe that, that, kind of sedentary nature creates the like, well, I'm bored, but I'm hungry, you know? So, um, it could be a, a number of things. The other things, um, that we can also, you know, touch on absolutely is like, you know, we don't drink as much usually when it's cold, um, when it's hot, when you're in, in summer, when you're sweating, you think like, oh, I need to hydrate, right? Like I'm sweating. I need to hydrate. Um, or it's hot and thirsty, but when it's cold, you're not sweating. Um, and so you kind of just forget to drink. Um, or you're like, Oh, I think I'll have another cup of like cafe or something like that. And then you just kind of get stuck in these like (laughs) dehydrating drinks that you're not really, um, hydrating yourself. And that can be confused with hunger as well. So to answer your question, yes and no, but more often it's no, we don't actually need more. Um, but we need to, maybe think about making like better, cozier choices, right? (laughs) Yeah, it's it's interesting that you say that. So I live in the Midwest and so we get some crazy weather swings. Um, Sometimes like yesterday, it was a high of 80, but the low last night was 40. Um, And that's a pretty big swing for in the middle of the the day. So like when you wake up in the morning, the fireplace is on because we have, of course, like the the fake fireplace, but it still lets off heat. So it's still very cozy. I want an extra cup of coffee. Coffee, I want sweaters. And then by the afternoon, I'm ready to, to go outside and do something because it's really nice out there. But but you're totally right. I ran outside yesterday morning and it was 45 degrees. And I totally forgot to drink water when I got back because I it didn't yeah. feel the same effort level as it does when it's like 85 when I'm, you're running, even though it was only a couple of miles. I didn't feel the need to drink water. Yeah. Yep. A hundred percent. So, um, you know, and, and then we also want to think about, well, where are you living? Like I, so, um, we got orders to be stationed in, uh, Washington, not Washington, DC, Washington state, um, from North Carolina. So we went from tropical, like beach town to Washington. (laughs) And I had never lived anywhere where it was like, cold that dark or cold like all the time so for me I was like that's Washington like it's the west coast like this is great you know like the mountains the woods like I'm from northern California originally I'm like that's great we love that stuff so used to the scenery I was not prepared for (laughs) the fact that it's like dark all the time and so I I mean, I was pregnant at the time, so that also was a factor, but I I was just kind of like, I don't know what to do with myself. Like, I just, I guess you just kind of hunker down, but it was so gray all the time. I mean, literally people would be like, 
oh, the summer is amazing. The summer is amazing. We had like a freak short summer and it was literally sunny for an hour a day from like three to no. 4 p.m. No. Like three to 4 p.m. So you have to wait the whole day and then three to 4 p.m. you're like standing outside in the sun. <laughs> so, you know, like a hundred percent, I just wanted like cozy, warm food all the time. So, so things that we can do for that, right? Yeah. Is it, we can absolutely have those cozy items, right. And still be eating to plan or, you know, relatively to plan depends on like what your specific goals are, right. And what you're working on. And if you're working with a coach and what all that is, right. How strict we need to be, but is is there a goal for, is there a goal to have hot cocoa every day? Is that a goal? (laughs) So we can actually do that and I'll tell you how to do that. (laughs) So So drinking things like that. So, um, something that's like warm and cozy. Um, I like to do vital proteins, um, collagen peptides and it's chocolate. I've been talking to a lot of my clients about this lately because the weather's shifting in some places and two scoops is going to be just a tiny bit over, uh, 15. It's about 20 grams of protein. So one scoop is only 10 grams of protein. I do it in like this size cup and I do one scoop And then I just use hot water, but you can also do like unsweetened almond milk to make it a little creamier. I'm not even kidding. It is so chocolatey with just the one scoop. You're getting 10 grams of protein. There's nothing else in it um, that's going to like throw anything off. And you can just kind of end your night with that. It's something a little bit cozy and sweet. I do. Yeah. So yeah, I just like use a tea kettle. Oh, oh, that's what I was going to ask. Like, how do you warm it up appropriately, you know, so it doesn't do that weird thing where it like scalds it and then makes it Oh, it scalds it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I just use a tea kettle because I use water. So I just put the protein inside and use a tea kettle with the hot water. But if you want to do um, the almond milk, then just heat the almond milk until it just like is about at a boil and then pour it in top or like on top of it. And you can do like a little cinnamon stick if you want um, Mm -hmm. in there as well. So that's something a little warm and cozy treat. Another thing I love um, this time, well, I love it all the time, but um, especially this time of year, I'm a big ginger person. So I'm like, I tell people I'm like a type A hippie. (laughs) And I think that if I ever did start a podcast, it would be (laughs) type A hippie. (laughs) (laughs) Those those two things do not typically go together. (laughs) Because I like order and cleanliness and not to say that hippies are not clean, but I I lived in Santa Cruz for many, 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 many years. And, you know, like I like order and things to be where they need to be. And I'm very neat and tidy and I have a schedule and a schedule for the kids and whatnot. But I'm super holistic in the fact that um, I go towards like, uh, foods or, um, herbs or spices or, you know, uh, more holistic measures whenever it comes to like, uh, fighting off colds or, um, which is interesting because, you know, I have a background in, in the medical field. And so I do value Western medicine. I just tend to go towards like the holistic stuff first. So, I am always talking about drinking, you know, ginger tea, um, boiling fresh cut ginger um, with a lot of lemon in there. Um, You can do some like echinacea drops in there too, if you want. Um, And that's not going to add anything to your day or your macros if that's what you're focused on, but there's a lot of health benefit. It warms the blood um, basically. And then cooking with a lot of like ginger and garlic to warm the blood um, to, um, keep your body healthy and, and fighting off whatever might be floating around. So those are nice, cozy things that you can incorporate as well. Um, the, the herbal teas are totally fine. Um, as long as that's not your sole source of drinking water, right? We need to also be consuming the appropriate amount of water. I have a super hard time with that, especially in the winter. So I will do hot water and squeeze a little lemon in it and nothing else. And then that's, that's a way for me to get in. I will sip a hot drink all day long. Um, in fact, almost all day long in the summer, people kind of make fun of me for it, but, um, wait, you drink hot drinks in the summer too. I do. I, uh, wow. yeah, I really love ginger and lemon. So <laughs> it's That's a problem. Great. So <laughs> hot all the time. 
I mean, if you're going to have something that you're, that's kind of like something you enjoy all day long, that's a pretty healthy drink to have all day long. It's much healthier yeah, than my exactly. go-tos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then, you know, like other things that are cozy that are totally on plan, like, right, your oats, your steel cut oats, that's completely on plan. That's super easy to make cozy. In fact, on our Met Pro website, um, We've got recipes and we've got a few different overnight oat recipes on there. Um, I believe there might be a baked oat recipe on there as well. But I mean, those are very, very cozy, very easy to make. You can do sweet or savory with your oatmeal. You can absolutely use it later in the day and make like a savory bowl and put some like microgreens and avocado and like, you know, some other items like that to make it feel more like a Buddha bowl. Um, and yet it still has that warming effect. Um, bootables in itself are great using, you know, the sweet potato, the quinoa for the carb, um, some nice warm protein, um, whether that's chicken or red meat, or um, you could go towards like tofu or tempeh and then getting all of your greens in and mixing it all up. Those are really cozy meals as well. Um, eating butternut squash instead of like noodles when you're on a lower phase if you are on a lower phase that's great too you can do really nice sort of like baked spaghetti it's warm and cozy and comforting um and then you know like your red meat if you're a red meat eater um eating red meat during the the cooler months um is also great because it's got a lot of iron in it um we don't want like that iron deficiency so um you can do soups or stews um, mm. with that as well. And I believe on the recipe site on our website, we also have like a, a winter soup section or, um, and we've got a few good recipes there. Lentils, if you're vegan, is the main thing too. So all those things are so nice and cozy to eat. You can absolutely enhance your eating experience during the winter with those and stay warm. Um, when we eat, when your body is digesting and processing it, right, that, that um, creates a heat in your body. And so a lot of times people eat because they feel cozier or warmer after they eat. It's not necessarily, not, not necessarily the eating of the hot food itself, but your body like digesting it and creating that heat um, in the digestion process. Um, so that's another reason why people might turn to eating more frequently um, in the winter. Okay. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, it's, it, it could just be that whenever we're cold, our body is looking to feel, um, a certain way. And by using foods that are warming, it can make us feel as if we're, we're warmer, but we can mm -hmm. be choosy about those foods. We don't have to, you don't have to go straight to all the, the foods that you grew up with and that right. to get that same feeling. Um, so I, you gave a lot of really good alternatives for uh, foods that I would probably gravitate toward. <laughs> uh, yeah. I come from a Southern cooking household. So we have all kinds of things like uh, chili and ham and beans and things like that. Although we have an excellent chili uh, recipe over on the Met Pro website at all. Also, if that is something that is your your jam. Um, what about you mentioned whenever you moved to Washington, that was a really like a tough transition. I mean, that's, that's what I took away from that. Was there, yeah. um, is that like due to the, the grayness? Like, was that, did you have to struggle with any kind of emotions, um, or changes? I know a lot of people do get kind of down during the winter time. And, and if so, was there, did you have some like, um, strategies on how to avoid that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you don't know what you don't know. I've always lived. Um, this is actually the very first time that I've ever not lived on a coast. I currently wow. live in Idaho, so, um, I am not on a coast anymore. So, <laughs> so, I, you know, change. I grew up, yeah. Right. So Northern California, um, Santa Cruz Area's beach, right. Like California weather. And then we got orders to North Carolina again on the coast. So it's a beach town. It's a resort town. Um, it's very warm and sunny. I spent, you know, every Christmas out on the beach. Um, so, you know, I, the hurricanes aren't great, but still it's sunny and then, um, orders to Washington. And for me, I had never lived anywhere like that. I, I didn't know. I was like, well, Northern California, we get snow, we get cold, right. We have all the seasons, like it'll be fine. 
And um, again, it could have been the combination of the fact that I was uh, newly pregnant. I had just done um, IVF. And so that in and of itself was a little challenging, um, mm-hmm. obviously with the hormones and the shots. Um, but I am also a very, very happy <laughs> pregnant person. I feel like at my best when I'm pregnant, which is surprising because I, I was an athlete before that. And everybody was like, oh, you're going to have a hard time. Initially I did, but I am actually somebody that really loves being pregnant. So I was like, well, maybe it's not this. And it was right when COVID happened. And as you know, like California, Washington, all those things closed down completely. So it was hard to move to a new state. And then also kind of like transition into like, well, I can't really meet anybody because it's COVID and, you know, we're indoors and we can't really go places. So Boy, but that's then the other the isolation that, trifecta, yeah. right? Now. Jeez. Yes. And then I really just wasn't used to it being dark all the time. Like, and I didn't realize how much of a sun baby I am. Mm-hmm. And so I, I 100% am just somebody that needs the sun. Um, I don't mind if there's like a winter season, but it was just like an all year gray. Um, and it is gorgeous. And to all my Washington people, like you guys are studs and there's so much to do there. It is very beautiful. Uh, just for me, I had a super hard time. Um, and I don't know if it was actually, um, seasonal, you know, depression or if it was just kind of like the combination of everything, but I do know that, seasonal affective disorder is a very real thing. And I I have clients with it and, and family members with it. And it's something that we need to address and talk about. And, and the biggest tools that, um, that I utilize and that I recommend um, 100%, if you can get your hands on a happy light, do it. That made when I lived there, it did. Yeah. It it made a difference that just the light, the like sun. Um, I know that so I used to joke around and say, like, when I was in my early 20s, tanning was a big thing. Like, you go to the tanning bed, right? Yeah. Like, before your weekend in Vegas or whatever you're doing, <laughs> right? So you look good. <laughs> and it would be my best sleep ever. Would really? be in that 20-minute tanning bed. I could sleep just immediately into, like, the best sleep ever. 20 minutes later, I wake up with this beautiful tan and feel so refreshed. Like it was just amazing. Right. Obviously that's not great for your skin. And right. Right. <laughs> skin cancer. So we don't want to do that necessarily, but my, my takeaway from that was just like, Oh, I really needed that sun to like have my body feel like peaceful and happy. Right. That, um, those, those rays. So Happy Light did help. Also, when I was there, I got evaluated by a holistic practitioner um, and she did chiropractic while I was pregnant too. And I was very, very low in B. And so um, taking vitamin D or eating foods that are um, rich in vitamin D is going to help as well. Um, And D is not one of those things where you take it and then that day your D is up, right? D is something that takes a long time to get into your system and for that D to build up. So it's something that you have to be consistently working at, you know, facilitating it with the K vitamin is going to be really helpful as well. Um, And those are all things that you can absolutely talk to your practitioner about, whether it be a holistic practitioner or your um, primary care, Um, you can very easily get your levels drawn just to see where you are with that. Um, Other things, move get out and move, go outside. Even if it's not sunny, go outside because there are rays that will come through being outside in the fresh air. Even if it's cold, um, is going to make you feel better. I, even if it's just for a little bit, get outside, move, go on a walk. If it's, you live somewhere where it's just far too cold for that, then move, get on your Peloton, get, you know, go to a class, go to your local CrossFit gym, right? Go be around people or at least interacting in some way, get that movement in, release those endorphins, warm up your body, right? Do something good for yourself so that you don't just sit and kind of marinate in that, um, that gray, right? Um, And so those things really helped me a lot. And then I got super into cooking, even more so than I already was I've grown up cooking. It was a passion of my father's that he passed down to me. 
but during COVID when we were just inside all the time, Mm -hmm. um, I would just figure out different things to cook, um, for the kids and ways to incorporate, um, really vitamin rich foods and vegetables, um, and fruit into our day, um, and creative ways. And so, you know, doing something like that, where you, you're, you're cooking, you're feeling like what's on your plate is really serving your body well, um, and in a healthy way can absolutely help, um, having goals during that time, uh, working towards something is helpful as well. So you don't just feel like you're marinating in the gray, you're stagnant in the gray, like you're not motivated, you're not working towards anything, right? Like that's really can be really detrimental to your mindset. Um, and then last but not least, obviously, if it goes past that, talk to somebody right now. And there's so many resources available online, so easy just to get in and, you know, talk to a therapist online or go somewhere in person is a little bit more difficult right now, but there are hundreds of websites now literally are on your phone apps where you can um, talk to somebody 15, 30 minutes, you know, to an hour, depending on what you need. And just stay on top of that. There's no shame in that. You're keeping, you have to keep everything healthy. Like I am very much of the entire body approach to health. It's not just about your macros. It's not just about working with your coach at MetPro. It's not just about, you know, your exercise. Um, It's about everything. Mentally, you've got to be in a good place. You've got to be in a good place with your nutrition, your health, your movement, creating like the steps and the pathway for a longer life and healthier life overall, not just in one single area. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. It's and and the thing is, is they all build on each other. If you you were talking about like don't marinate in the gray. If you if you move, then you have motivation to work on a goal. You know, like it helps with that. And then having having this goal of something else you're working on, whether it be professional or something, you know, or just personal, having working on that will then give you the confidence and the feel good to go move. Like they work, they build off of each other. And I know that when I feel down, it's really hard to get up and do things like that. And so I think that your advice as far as like moving, just like start, you don't have to have like this major goal. You can start really small, just getting, getting up and going for that walk that you talked about. What a great suggestion. It's something that is so simple, but it's so effective. And um, I think that sometimes the the type a personalities i i i'm i'm not i wouldn't call myself the hippie type a but i'm absolutely the type a (laughs) and uh and i think that sometimes i have a tendency of it's got to be all or nothing right like it's got to be this amazing huge goal or it quote unquote doesn't count it doesn't count right (laughs) (laughs) so you gotta you gotta like just move forward every day even whenever you're not feeling your best because um, before you know it, 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 you will you will be feeling better by taking those steps. And so um, and and absolutely never hesitate to get help outside help, because um, if you were sick with pneumonia, you'd go to the doctor without thinking twice about it. And if there's something going on that's making you not feel good in your head, no matter what it is, go to the doctor and they can yep. they can definitely help with that. Um, so yeah. I, th- I love those commercials that are out like right now. I, I forget what it's for, but it's like. A, like a dude benching at the gym and he's just like crushing himself and this guy's <laughs> like man do you need help and he's like no I don't want to let my family down blah, blah blah but it's like you know like those commercials just I love them because I think that they they speak so well to you know the mental health aspect of everything um and how we you know need to be open and embracing that 100 percent and, you know, like when I, I am a hundred percent or nothing type of person as well, it was really hard learning for me to switch into like athlete or from athlete to mom mode. Um, and then, you know, now being <laughs> single mom one. where, yeah, now being single mom where I have to like, you know, like I am everything. Right. So it's, it's like, it's a tough thing. I, I don't get to be my 100, right. Like where I feel like, oh man, that was like my 100%. And so adjusting expectations around that as well. And having your support system, like I go, I don't need to go to a CrossFit box. I have a, I have a CrossFit in my gym. Um, I own an affiliate in North Carolina still. I have equipment in my gym. Um, We do distance programming. Other CrossFit gyms do distance programming, but 
Like we have an interactive Facebook, so you can interact with the members and interactive scoreboard. So you're seeing those things. I know it's the same thing with like Peloton. It's an, it's an interactive community, right? Um, holding you accountable, find a buddy, you know, it could be in a different state to just like, you could, you know, shoot texts back and forth, like, Hey, heading out for this, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you just got back. How did it go for you? Like, Oh, weren't those, you know, whatever hard, like then at least you, you have that like built in accountability and community. Um, if you're just somebody who like, just doesn't know really where to start because you're like, I don't know, I either have this like soul crushing three hour workout, or I don't know what to do with my life. Like <laughs> go on to the Met Pro app. We've got home workouts with no equipment. We've got hit workouts with no equipment. We've got, if you're just like, I'm in such a slump that I just need to do anything, go into the warm up section and hit that. Like then at least, and just check it off. You did something for the day, build on it each day. You know, Absolutely. like we have our interactive Facebook group for um, our clients where they're posting recipes or, you know, things going on, um, you know, and you can interact that way. Like, Hey, who's hitting this workout with me this week, you know? Um, and, and all of that is good for you, but also for someone else. I always tell people, um, you know, to be, it's, you know, you want to be that change that you want to see happen in the world. Right. That's always, it's always written on like everything, you know, I have like a canvas bag that says that, but it, it's yeah. so true. You need to, to be that change. If you want to see a change in yourself, you might be that change for somebody else as well. So start small and you might be the person that like changes somebody else's day. And then you guys are in it together. You guys are little battle buddies. So, um, you know, you have to reach out for the help that you need. And that's another reason why having a coach on concierge is so important, especially heading into the cold months. People are uh, always like, yeah. I got to take a break from concierge because winter, you know, like, and that's another thing people expect to gain weight in the winter. This, that shouldn't be. So you kind of like mentally put yourself there. Yeah, like, that's so we, true. So like, true. don't put yourself there. Like, you know, just cause you can't see the abs or whatever it is. Right. Like, just cause you're like, I'm wearing a sweater. Nobody knows. Like, that's still not a reason to let your health slip, you know? So, and having a coach through the holidays where there is more temptation, where there are those like heartier, you know, meals, casseroles, right? Like yes. you want to have a coach there to support you to be that accountability. And even if people are always like, well, I didn't really make any, any movement during, you know, the holiday season. I kind of just stayed even. I'm like, yeah, look at what might've happened if you <laughs> didn't have a coach. Look what you did last year. (laughs) Yeah, like (laughs) you probably wouldn't have stayed even. You know what I mean? Like, so, so all those things, having accountability and someone to guide you is always going to be a good thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the winter, the winter months are the most challenging, um, depending on, um, what holidays you celebrate, it can be so overwhelming with all the get togethers and everything. And, uh, so it is, it is definitely helpful to have a coach walk you through that and be there for your support. And like you said, the goal doesn't have to be to even lose weight during that time. It can be to maintain and yeah. that's a win. <laughs> At least it yep. is for me. Or, yeah. Or just not fall not fall into the trap of like, oh, I don't know. I haven't moved for a month because yeah, <laughs> I, like it was cold. I didn't feel like getting up, like, you know, so it could be for a variety of things. We are here for, for all things. Yes, we are, you know, nutrition based and, um, but we are here for all things. I am sure, I mean, you know, and us as coaches, we all know that we're not just coach, right? We're not just like, okay, add another piece of bread or whatever it is, right? Like we're talking to our clients about everything and mm-hmm. anything because it all is one, right? Yes. So I definitely encourage people, even if it's just for a little like October, November, December, you know, new year, new me bundle, <laughs> like hop on. <laughs> um, it's going to be, I think, I think that that is the most effective effective time to be on uh, with the coach you know a lot of people are like oh gearing into summer I want to look good for bikini season well if you're already there come spring you're probably not going to have as hard of a time maintaining when it is warm and you can get outside and you know all those Absolutely. things so that's so you true. know setting setting that foundation and 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 keeping a level playing field so we can then I mean how amazing would it be to just keep this like level playing field and then come, you know, new year, new me, then you're like, okay, let's kick it up a notch. And you're already there. You can take it to the next level. Then you don't have to wait 
until April to do that because you have to backtrack and repair all the, the damage that's been done. So if only, yeah, that's that, that's the goal right there, right there. That's the goal. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> did, is there, is there anything else that, that we did not cover for cold weather that we want to make sure that we covered? Um, I think, you know, we spoke to touch on it a little bit. If you are doing cold weather sports or you do live somewhere where it is very, very cold and you are still trying to maintain your sport in that cold weather, um, that will definitely require a little uptick, um, in calories, uh, depending upon the training and the weather conditions and kind of, you know, what your body is being asked to do. Um, and that is absolutely something that as for, for athletes like that, I always say, talk to your coach because I mean, even, even though I know of, of these things, when I was competitive, I deferred to my coach for everything as a sounding board and then try and do anything on my own. Right. Like I coach all day. Um, and I want my coach to coach me, um, so that I can be doing what's very best for me. And we don't always know what's very best for us. So, so true. Um, I can I, guess yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or you're just like, no, no, no. And you, you are closed to a different way of being able to do something that might in fact improve your performance. So if it is cold, if you are doing those things, um, and you do require more in terms of calories, Um, your coach can absolutely direct you towards the appropriate amount of calories to consume the types of foods we want to be consuming for that physical activity and the nutrient timing around that physical activity or in that physical activity. Um, And so those are all things that can 100% be addressed with your MetPro coach um, or whatever, whoever your coach is for your specific sport. Excellent advice, as always. Kat, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, thank listeners, you. Thank you. Listeners, that's all for this week. You can find all the MetPro Method episodes anywhere you get podcasts or metpro.co slash podcast. Please be sure to follow the show and rate and review. That lets other people know what they can expect. And you can learn more about MetPro at metpro.co. I'm your host, Crystal O'Keefe, and I will be back next week. Until then, remember, consistency is key.